Thank you, Mr. Ranjit. Now, this is a great opportunity for me to highlight some of the key trends and uh, the core domains of designing cybersecurity practices for 2022. My focus is to understand or to highlight the different uh, points that really drives a successful cybersecurity strategies for public domain as well as for the enterprises. The trends is one a key area of proactive cybersecurity practices. By understanding the different trends for the coming year or for the coming practices, helps the team cybersecurity manager as well as the national policymakers to understand what could be the right uh, kind of the policies, practices, as well as the tools to be adopt, apply, and then uh, to perform the different cybersecurity awareness around those practices. In going to those areas, we can see two different areas of cybersecurity, which is very essential to bring the cyber hygiene or cyber resilient state for end users. End user services are not free of any of the troubles. And to give the trouble-free services to the end users, first we need to understand how to secure, how to protect the enterprise's resources. They are the backbone of the different services to the end users. Similarly, the same kind of the services are offered by different government uh, services, which are secure, protected by the similar practices, but, but from the different sets of the experts. And by understanding the different trends at the beginning of the year or at the middle of the sum of the cybersecurity strategies, experts can get some proactive approaches to apply the new trends and to protect the assets by keeping higher ROI and then lowering the tissue, same time giving the mental peace to the different users. The first trend we can see in 2021 is the SOC maturity model for the enterprise. Enterprise has different approaches towards the security of data information. That means the different set of the information, either the application or maybe the end user data. The first thing is to give the maturity model for the SOC. SOC is no more a new topic for us or for the enterprises. And by giving the maturity model, they can really understand where the SOC is sitting in and then what they can do in next uh, one year or two years. So that would be one of the key trends in 2022. Second, as we are going to the new era, which is full of new kind of uh, digital threats. In 2022, one of the common threats would be ransomware or the malware oriented or the protect uh, supported by the malware. To really secure the organization, organization can start or would start using intelligent SIM rather than just a simple SIM. In understanding the concept or the benefits of the SIM, there are different kinds of the SIM. And one of the type is the intelligent, which is powered by machine learning and other intelligent agents that helps the organization to really collect and to embed the new functions such as cyber threat intelligence. That was one of the topic in the previous, uh, by the previous speaker, somehow we could not get the chance to uh, understand his view or his uh, ideas. But one of the key trends in intelligent SIM is to integrate the cyber threat intelligence and then making them useful for the different practices inside the SOC. As end users are no more, are no more ready to accept the challenges related to the cyber threats. They want to have a secure, protected, and trouble-free environment. To really make that one, in 2022, we can see one of the a tool that is XDR would be trending among the adoptions. Now, in bringing that, next thing is to have the data privacy or the security of information while sending from one system to another or while logging to the different system. So that will be powered by the two-factor authentication either in the OTP fashion or OTP methods or mode or another one is using different authenticator. One of them we can see Microsoft Authenticator, Google Authenticator. Similarly in 2022, we can see the similar authenticator from our 
other services, which was discussed in the recent workshop by the experts and probably that we can see in other base system too. As most of the services are offered by the application, next trend in 2022, we can see is the application secret. And giving the security to the application, one of the best approach is to add the biometric security to, towards the app security. Application security comes with different practices, different models and different standards. But one of the common missing point is not having integrated biometric security for the application security which could be one of the trend or can be one of the trend in 2022. In 2021, we have seen a lot of uh, attacks related to the supply chain. Supply chain attacks can come in two different favors. One is the hardware based, another is the software based. But another form could be there that is the human factor. Irrespective of the type of the factors, in 2022, supply chain based security would be one of the trend and is very crucial for every organization, individual experts to really follow that one to give the resilient state to the uh, different uh, asset and the data. In bringing all this together, next is in exchanging the information, it's crucial to keep them secure, not only secure, but in the private state. Our, by maintaining the privacy of the information shared in the secure environment. There are two common practices, basically three common practices currently we have seen. One is a virtual uh, ID, another is the MAPS number, which is used in sharing the data as well as processing data by different machine learning as well as the standard application. Third one is a, uh, encryption. These are there in the common, uh, some of the great applications, but in 2022, we can see it is as one of the common practice among all standard applications. As we have seen this are the trends for the enterprises. Next is to understand how the same trends can be used by the end user or how end user organized and other organizations who are responsible for giving the security to the enterprise, uh, security to the end users can focus a new trend. One of the key trends in 2022 we can see is the strong password policy, not only for the application, but for the mobile devices, as well as the smaller devices, which are used in the home appliances, such as Bluetooth, which generally ignored in protecting a mobile phone, as well as in other IoT devices. Multiple layer of the security for the malware is one of the thing we can see in 22 to really make them uh, effective among different type of the uh, devices. Data privacy and application has taken its own space in data security. Information privacy is no more just the uh, simple topic. It is an integral part of the our society. There were many uh, bodies, many uh, hearing related to the information security. Under the information security, we can see one of the key area is the data privacy. Now to give the data privacy to the different uh, set of the information collected by application, it needs strategies, practices, as well as the uh, some of the legal frameworks. And to make them effective in 2022, all organizations will start focusing how end user can contribute towards the such practices. And to really make the end user fully in the benefited state is important to make them aware of all practices. One of the example recently we have seen M other applications. Now, most of the user, if they are not aware of the fact that the application has the security options such as EKYC and OTP-based authenticator, they would not be getting much benefit. So it is important, as said by all the experts, to organize different sets of the uh, cybersecurity engagement as well as awareness program, and which will be one of the key trends and has already trending starting 22, uh, 21. As most of the devices are no more independent of the OT systems, as we have seen, the electricity bills comes with the automated reading practices and they are connected with some of the OT systems. Now, in that case, it is important to have the, some kind of the awareness related to the cyber threat attacks to the OT platforms. And then by integrating the cyber threat hunting by automated practice or the tools from 
uh, the different vendors such as logarithm can understand if there is a threat, advanced threats such as the malware or ATP, uh, users can understand how to keep their system free from such uh, troubles. Globally, we have these such kind of the practices for the ransomware security. Ransomware assessment framework, it's one of the key trends in 2021 and which has taken the global shape into, will say, uh, take the global shape in 2022. As we are collecting a lot of information, next thing is to how to protect the data if there are some breaches or incidents. Most of us will think only about protecting the information, but if there is really an, really a set of the incidents or the troubles in the devices or the hardwares or the applications, how the financial loss can be protected. One of the way is keeping the device free from such kind of the troubles, but which is not really possible in practical sense. So to keep that uh, gap filled with the, some of the relevant practices is to go and buy the cyber insurance. Cyber insurance comes in two different variants, maybe multiple than that one, the, those two uh, categories. One is the protection for the device, another is the protection of data. If there is a loss of information, device and cyber insurance helps in getting the right kind of the benefits from the uh, insurance issuing companies. Now, all these practices are no more free from some of the practices which are adopted by the developer of the different application or by the different cybersecurity strategy making bodies. And we have a practice called DevOps SecOps. In 2022, we can see not only the DevOps, but DevSecOps as well as DevSecOps are two common uh, elements in the one of the trend. Can you move to the next one, please? By understanding a different cybersecurity trends, the core idea is to correlate, uh, correlate the cyber attacks with the different ways to improve the security practices. Cyber attack generates a lot of evidences across different platforms or across different areas. Most of the uh, details are collected or generated by the system logs. That could be of two types. One is the event, which are the regular events or the details collected by the internal processing of the computer systems. Second are the logs related to the application as well as the some uh, external or third party application connected to the computer or the server systems. Networking, networking devices collect a lot of data related to the business as well as the application, same time it collects its own data. And in 2022 or 2021, we talked about one of the trends is the endpoint automation, endpoint security automation. Those devices are also not free of collecting or generating the logs. Now, all those logs are the vital source of uh, information or evidences which are useful in different areas of cybersecurity and which were ignored earlier, but in 2021 and 2022, uh, these were the, the key elements considered by many cybersecurity companies, experts, and the researchers to understand how new kinds of the security practice or the tools can be designed. Now, to really understand these evidences or the logs collected, forensic tracks really helps the security team to do the different activities those include threat analysis and to improve the cyber threat intelligence, which is the one of the key trends I projected uh, inside the SOC. By combining the uh, forensic trace for cyber threat intelligence, it helps in improving the incident response. Same time, by understanding the vulnerabilities which are explored by the threat on the practice, uh, cybersecurity team can really apply digital forensic inside the cybersecurity activities. And by understanding different logs, as well as the different cyber threat intelligence collected by the intelligence CTI platform, team can design really effective and intelligent cyber security controls, such as the intelligent as well as automated endpoint security. That gives the one of the state for the end user, as well as the enterprise, which we can call the cyber resilient state. That really protects all three things system data, as well as the business processes or the flow of the application. 
Now, by doing this one, the security team, organization, or the different law, law and enforcement agency can contribute in bringing the new or the different kind of the internal resources, which will be helpful in correlating different areas of cybersecurity, such as the DIFR, BAPT, and then creating and then implementing new kind of the InfoSec products. Here I'm uh, uh, presenting how digital forensic can be useful in cybersecurity or in achieving cyber resilience. We'll explore a few trends. I'm not going to talk much on the different talks or uh, different topics, but focus on how digital forensic triage or the forensic analysis can be useful in cybersecurity practices. Can you move to the next one? Yeah, next. Now we talk about the different, uh, I talked about the different trends in the first slide. And one of the key trends we have seen in 2021 is the security of the data and information. Now it is age, not only of the security, but is the privacy and the digital hygiene. To really bring the digital hygienic uh, environment, digitally hygienic environment, human intervention is one of the trouble for the security practices. And automation really improves the quality of the digital hygiene practices. And that would be one of the trend we can see in 2022. Others are common and not only the data privacy, but there are the certain ethics to be contributed by the end users as well as the organization in bringing the cyber resilient estate. All these are the part of the different practices and the organization really has to understand how supply chain attacks can be prevented or how the ransomware attacks can be prevented in achieving that state. So those are the, some of the additional trends we can see in cyber resilient practices or cyber resilience of 2022. Besides that, there are certain other areas which we can really think of uh, considering in 2000, 2022. Those include biometrics in cybersecurity and their security uh, process. One of the such practice were discussed, as I mentioned, in uh, our, our workshop 2021 or our 2.0 workshop, how biometrics can be secured if they are tampered, what are the different ways to protect the privacy of the information collected. And for that, we can see 2022 is one of the opportunity, one of the year where biometrics in cybersecurity will grow. And one of the key trends as everybody really started exploring is the quantum network security or the quantum computing in cybersecurity. Many organizations has already started their products or already started procuring the devices for quantum-based security that really helps in protecting the data through the photonic uh, checks of the information. And that is the one of the application of quantum computer in 2022. Now, all these trends really the organization or individuals in achieving certain uh, advantages or being in the better side of these troubles. One of them, it helps in improving the mental health, which is one of the troubles we talked in 2021. There were many initiatives at the private, public, as well as government scale, how to improve the quality of the netizens, how to improve the health troubles of the netizens in cyberspace. So these practices are applying these trends in the real sense really improves the quality of the uh, netizens in being in the mentally stable state in using different services from different platform or the areas then protecting the data loss would be one of the areas uh, that can be covered by understanding what trends will be there in the next year or in the coming year. Protecting the brand reputation is one of the data privacy and that is really important for everyone to understand. Information privacy comes along with the different, uh, different set of the uh, information or different aspects. One of them is a brand reputation. 
selling own quality or the ideas are also the concern for the information security. And achieving that helps the organization or individuals to really being in the state of the business continuity also. Business continuity really an important area where organization or individual can give their ideas, their success in the right or consistent state. And by saving the information or the some ideas as a part of protecting the data related to the individual or the system, everyone can contribute towards the business continuity strategies of every areas. Could you please move to the next? Yeah, next is already covered. Yeah. Now we'll take more on the security automation. Security automation is no more independent of the different kind of the threats which are coming from different areas. And the change of the type of the threats had changed the the amount of the troubles or the cost of the cybersecurity investment. And complying with the different standard really improves the quality of the services. There are different tools to understand and explore for bringing the automation to the organization. Everybody is talking about the SIM or the intelligent SOC. Now, one of the key trends we can see in 2021 for the security automation is the integration of the traditional SOC with the a new or the integrated SOC that is for the OT as well as for IoT. We can term that as the hybrid uh, hybrid SOC that can function for both the uh, system. One is the traditional IT system as well as the OT system. And many certification program or the cybersecurity of process has been discussed or presented for the hybrid as well as the integrated SOC. And inside the SOC, so, uh, what is called the integrated SOC, one of the trend to protect the user data would be the EDR or XDR. As XDR is mainly powered by machine learning, it will be one of the component or element of the security automation, which would be really trending in 2022. Can you go to the next please? Another trend in which started earlier and we have seen a lot of uh, uses of such platform is the IoT and IIoT. Large amount of data are collected from the end users through the different sensors. And those sensors are not free of the different attacks from various, uh, various sites of the uh, users or various sites of the attack vectors. Really protect them, it is crucial to understand how those data are moving from the end users are from the different sensors to the central uh, storage device. And IoT security is a crucial point to consider for OT2. As IoT and OT are well integrated, it's important for protecting them from all kinds of the recent attacks. We have seen one such attack in 2021 is the attacks on one of the uh, electricity or the gas supply chain which was not the IoT, but that was a combination of the IoT plus OT plus the web technology. Now, to really secure such kind of the application or such practice, we can see uh, IoT and OT trend as one of the key elements and the one of the need to be considered very seriously in 2022. Can you move to the next, please? Automated endpoint security is being discussed by many experts up for the last couple of years. Because of unavailability of the right kind of the tools and practices, it was left out. And now we are in the need, as well as which are available for every users, business user, or whether the business users or the public users to adopt. It really helps in protecting all kinds of the hybrid environment, such as mobile and desktop, BYT and BYD. Yesterday, we come across the one of the talk in BYT. That was not only the talk, e-poster presentation. And one of the challenges or one of the question was how 
the BYT or BYD can be used in keeping the privacy in safe. BYT, it's one of the areas where there is a larger chances or there is a big chances of exposure of the enterprises or the personal data to be exposed to the unauthorized hands or unauthorized connections or the systems. If the device is lost, organization would face or the, uh, the users will face a lot of trouble related to the loss of the information collected, processed, and stored in the BYT device. Now, in that case, it is important to have this some kind of the authorized, uh, automated endpoint security that really comes with some kind of the incident response attached to that one. If the device is lost and if it is in the encrypted state, it is possible for the team to be in the secure state and for it is uh, for the uh, attacker or the uh, the organization or the individual who really uh, get the access of the, those devices really cannot get the data. So it's kind of the practice is really helpful. And then XDR would be trending as one of the uh, cybersecurity trend in 2022. It has a lot of benefits. It really helps the team to uh, have the centralized monitoring of the devices through the technology such as mobile device management technology, as well as the other technology. And that really gives the, one of the key benefits is the automated forensic trace of the endpoints. So far, most of the big organization has a trouble in collecting the endpoint thread details or the thread related information from the endpoint devices. So far, most of the information are collected from the networks and the server logs. And by attaching this XDR as one of the component, give me a minute. An apology for this one. Uh, could you please go to the previous one? By integrating the capability of collecting the third details from the endpoint through the XDR, organization, security experts, as well as the forensic experts can get enough ideas, details, or insight of the attack. That it's one of the key. Uh, key factors, most of the banking sectors have started XDR as one of the most successful strategy for protecting the endpoint devices, including BYD as well as BYT. And we can really understand, can explore more ideas around it. Can you go to the next one? Cloud is no more independent of uh, any troubles. Our cloud comes with some additional difficulties in forensic as well as securing the different uh, information and application on it. Private cloud is one of the trends that most of the organization has started using as a secure way of using cloud for their enterprise applications. As they are connected with the different OT, it is crucial to really see how they can be protected. OT is the operational technology, uh, technology which are used by the enterprises as well as the government organization to control, process, as well as monitor the, some of the end devices. One of them may be the smart power grid. Now they are vulnerable for the attacks such as the ransomware and sniffing zero day attacks, APT and advanced malware, as well as the targeted attacks. In many scenarios we have uh, we have come across the forensic of the one of the deadliest malware by different experts or the community experts. Although they are identified, but the time they took to identify it is not acceptable. It was not within 10 hours or not within 24 hours. Most of the incident response for OT devices was beyond six days. In six days, there could be a large effect or the troubles to the enterprise or the system users. To really protect that one, it's important to have the cloud-oriented and integrated uh, OT-based security mechanism. And that's why cloud, such as uh, the CASB, that is cloud access security broker-based OT security would be one of the trend. 
And in bringing that, organization has already started adopting one of the model, as we all know, that is ZTA or ZTNA. Uh, that really comes with the concept that nothing is being granted at the beginning and then the excess are, grow, are maintained and then managed as per the requirement or as per the authentication and the practices. That model is the uh, zero trust model. And to really keep this OT with, IoT, uh, with uh, cloud in the very useful and successful model, they should follow the practice or organization can follow the practice under the uh, JTA model, some suggestion, and then organization can get ben better benefits in applying and using such practices. Can you move to the next? The fifth or uh, tenth would be uh, the application security along with the passwordless authentication. As said in the beginning, passwordless authentication comes with many factors and it is being debated across different areas. But one of the common passwordless authentication we have seen so far is the OTP. OTP-based authentication has been integrated by many uh, organizations in India as well as in the global scale, a global scale. But still many users feel that it is not that comfortable as most of the users are not uh, not in the state to consider OTP is a secure way. And they are still in the state that OTP could be accessed by the unauthorized person, but password is always with them. So to really uh, change this concept, it's important to really give the uh, new trend into the SAP. And this app security, along with the passwordless authentication, we can see trending is one of the uh, trend in 2022. Uh, it really helps in protecting the different kind of attacks, including password guessing and injection. Password guessing and injection is uh, one of the key trouble for every user and enterprise. And by using the OTP or the authenticator, this gets reduced by 80%. A recent study says that authenticator-based password uh, mechanism protects many kind of the attacks in the telecom industry too, such as the SIM swap. And in applying that one, it is really helpful in uh, protecting the privacy of the information too. As, doesn't get, as the attacker doesn't get inside the platform, it helps the organization to keep the information in the secure way, as well as protecting the information, keeping the data privacy rule practices in place. And there are certain advantages. It helps in applying secure by design, as well as privacy by design practices in actions. And then also to apply the ZTM, that is zero trust models, not only in the application, but, but always uh, also in the OT environment too, which I discussed would be one of the trend. Can you take to the next please? In 2022, apart from the ransomware, we have seen the side channels related attack which are not connected directly with the application, even not with the application data that is related to the hardware of the application, uh, hardware of any of the larger solutions. Now to really protect them, it's important what would be the better trend in 2022. So that is why uh, SCADA and hardware security would be trending as one of the key component of cybersecurity practices in 2000, uh, 2022. Although I repeated this term quite often, but yes, uh, 2022 would see a lot of new devices, a lot of new uh, solutions around SCADA and hardware security. There are different frameworks which are already in action to help the team or the users to understand it, such as Cyber Kill Chain, JTM for hardware security, which is not really known for most of the security practitioners, but yeah, JTM for hardware security is one of the way to give the hardware in a very resilient state. And MAT, which stands for MITR Attack Defense Te Technique, is being one of the key component among the threat vendors as well as the SOC experts. So this helps the team and the experts to give the secure state or the security to the different sensors, network devices, including quantum network security protocols, which are one of the trend, in, which is one of the trend already trending since 2021. In applying them together, 
the users can see a lot of new kind of the advantages. One of them is protecting the devices from the hardware theft as well as from the physical damage. Second one is the key component in bringing hardware security in practice is to remain safe from one of the biggest trouble in the cyber space is the supply chain attack. Supply chain attack has caused 90% of the global brand uh, damage in 2020 as well as in 2022, uh, 21. One of them is the uh, solar winds attack. As all, all of us know very well, if something is being changed in the code base, it's very important for the team to understand how to protect them. And by bringing the hardware security under the different mechanisms, such as encryption, cryptography, quantum cryptography, team can protect or the security experts can design some proactive solution from protecting from the hardware base as well as the software based supply chain attack. Uh, can you uh, take to the next, please? In all respect, whether there is a passwordless authentication or the data privacy, uh, whether there is a OT privacy, it is always important for the security team to see how it can be beneficial to the users or the security team. In that case, one of the key trends to follow in 2022 would be data privacy and differential privacy. Data privacy really helps to adopt the different standards in a way so that all information collected, processed, and sent by the application will always be in undisclosed state. This is very important for every organization, but it is always useful for the, in, uh, for the uh, end users to remain in mentally peace as well as to achieve the cyber resilient state and to have the cyber hygienic practices in action. There are many standards has been created globally as well as in India. A data privacy bill as well as data privacy rules have been discussed many times and have been adopted in different areas. There are some of the benefits such as it reduces the downtime by keeping the data in the right place and not allowing the unauthorized users to get access of information and the psychological preparedness by reducing the psychological preparedness of the attacker from getting into the system and then selling the information to the gray market or in the other areas. If the attackers is psychologically not prepared to make the bigger attacks, the type of the attack or the quantum of the attack gets automatically reduced. So this data privacy and differential privacy would be one of the trends. Can you please move to the next one? We are ready to get into the new kind of the uh, data experience that is 5G. Some countries have already explored it and we are in the stage of exploring it. Recently, uh, uh, Reliance has tested some of the services in some, uh, some part of India. Now it is realized that it's much faster, obviously as expected, but one of the key challenges is the security. As, the, as it comes with the low latency or the less latency, there is a bigger chance of being exposed to the different kind of the attacks. And there are bigger chances to be, uh, to be exposed to the different kind of the data loss. There are different acts to be followed to protect such thing in all, uh, areas in one word, the autonomous system and 5G security would be one of the trend. And as it is uh, going to be the, uh, the security trend for the network, it may come with this, some new trends such as the cryptographic key management. Another one is the quantum network security and its application. Uh, would you please move to the next? So far, we discussed about the some extension to the SOC, some extension to the security practices. Another key trend we can see in 2022 is the uh, next generation SOC. How new kind of SOC can be there that will be helpful for not only to the uh, security teams, but to the other teams, such as the cyber threat intelligence team who 
is responsible for reporting different kind of the threats. And they can also be part of the uh, system that can really contribute to the new initiatives such as I4C initiative towards the cybersecurity goals of the nation and really make them uh, fully, uh, fully, uh, fully aware of the different kind of the threats coming, not only through the uh, internet, but through the different application internally, externally, as well as inside the enterprises. There are different frameworks such as the automated threat intelligence that helps in giving the threats to the uh, SOC as well as NOC. And also is a network security, a network operation center, which is the traditional one. But right now, some organizations have started considering as the key requirements. There's the threat mitigation as well as the JTN OT security. By combining all these threats, uh, all these kind of the frameworks, along with the new approaches, organization can make them ready to have new kind of the security operation center, which is integrated with the OT system, integrated with the uh, automation of different practices, as well as integrated with the XDR to really collect the data from the end devices and then make them completely, uh, completely aware of every situation among the devices in the network, as well as in the application and servers. Can you take to the next? Next is the malware and the APT security. Advanced persistent threat is one of the key challenge for everyone, as it is designed not only by the individuals, but by the, some of the state sponsor groups. As they are control, monitor, and financed by the larger organization, they have predefined intention, and they, uh, they, comes with the, uh, they come with the, some, kind of the, uh, some kind of the pre-designed intentions or the, uh, or the goals. As they are coming with the uh, pre-designed goals, it's important for the organization individual to get ready to be protected from such kind of the large attacks. There are different attacks which started in early days, but they were again reappeared in 2014 and 2018, again in 2022 as the targeted phishing attack. Most of the targeted phishing attacks is no more independent of the malware. As it comes with the malware, they have some intelligence inside it. To really cope up with that one, many organizations has started testing the capability of machine learning to understand the attacks made by the uh, uh, possible by the malware. And one of the such organization is IBM. And by combining all these things in 2022, malware and APT security will be the key concern for the cybersecurity experts, SOC manager, as well as the CIO of most of the organization. Can you move to the next, please? Uh, to really cope up uh, with the, all the requirements and to manage the team to make capable or to bring the cyber resilient stand, uh, state, organization, individuals, as well as the other experts, Really need to not, uh, really need to think not only about the device, not only about the practice, but to build this such a uh, build a team which is capable of managing all of them together and applying in the right place. So for that, it's important to have the strategies, some practices such as organizing the security CTF and then bringing the purple team even in the public domain. So we can see the purple team and the security CTF. It's uh, as one of the trend, not only in the enterprise, but even in the public domain in 2022. Yeah, next. Yeah, next. Yeah, I'm keeping till here. I have uh, other uh, slides to talk, but considering the time, uh, as well as uh, the topic I have been al allowed to talk, keeping this much. Now, at the end, I would like to uh, summarize my uh, trends. Trends, it's one of the proactive factor for designing successful cybersecurity strategies. And forensic trace really helps in collecting the logs from different system practices, 
as well as devices by telling practices means the different flows of the applications as a broker or the agents, and then giving the researcher enough ample data to design new cybersecurity strategies, as well as to uh, improve the quality of the cyber threat intelligence, and then providing enough information to the cyber security, uh, cyber, uh, to the digital forensic team in investigating large scale crimes, not only in the enterprise, but in the public domain too. And there are many trends. Some of the trends are very effective to apply and use. Some trends are to improve the quality of the services. Thank you all. These are the, some of the trends or the topics I discussed.